Now, there's a lady, I did, never met her, but I met one of her children uh, around Unity. She came to visit me after a class I was teaching out at Unity School, and we chatted about her mother and her life and whatever. The mother used to tell this story. She had a, a baby that had been ill for six months, abscessed ears. So the mother prayed. She prayed desperately for healing of the, of the infant's ears. And yet at the same time while she's praying, her mind was filled with thoughts of fear. And she realized that God could not go through her to heal a child because God is love and perfect love casts out fear. She was putting up interference, a shield, a screen. She was providing a broken pipe or a disconnected circuit. A young minister came by, came to the house, and he said, I'll go up and have a prayer with him. It was a, a, a young, young boy. And the mother said, oh, it won't, it won't do any, any good. He's only a year and a half old. And the young minister must have smiled at that. Oh, that doesn't matter. And he went upstairs anyway, glowing, beaming. He placed his hands on the baby's ears and he asked God to send his life into this baby and make him well, to send God's own life into this baby and make him well. And then he gave thanks that it was done, that it was accomplished. Now, when we say amen at the end of a prayer, that's what we're doing. We're saying it is done, it is complete. And yet, most of the time, we don't, we're not even aware of it. We say amen like you might say, thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. Without any thought. So it, it's not really a statement. The fever flush on the baby went away. He got his normal pale, natural color. He quieted down. He went to sleep. And when he woke up, he was well. And he never had abscessed ears again. I've heard a lot of things being in unity since 1966. Some of the things I he have heard is Charles Fillmore never laid on hands. Charles Fillmore never started a church on Tracy Avenue. Uh, both are incorrect. Old timers who used, to, who used to usher here used to tell me about the Wednesday night healing meetings. And there were times they brought people down here on gurneys, put them over here, and Charles would come down off the stage and he'd lay hands on them and he'd pray over them. Oh, yes, he did. What most of the New Thought, if not all of the New Thought healers were doing at the time making the connection with the patient and being that, that connection 
to the source of the power, which is God, being an open channel through which it flows. This is a quote that, that uh, Charles Fillmore it's, uh, made at a Wednesday night healing service in 1923. Our subject tonight is healing. Every Wednesday night, that's our subject. Every Sunday morning, that is our subject. And every day, every night, the subject of a practical Christian is healing. Because healing in the present race consciousness follows understanding of truth. That's a great, that's a great statement. You've probably never seen that. Uh, I have never seen it published, except when I have. We opened with an opening statement that I said was Charles Fillmore's. Jesus Christ, my healer, reveal thyself to me and through me. Jesus Christ, my healer, reveal thyself to me and through me. Together. Jesus Christ, my healer, reveal thyself to me and through me. And once again, speak it silently, slowly. And we say, Amen. In Charles' book, Adam Smashing Power of Mind, he says, the literature of unity teems with testimonials of persons who have been healed and are grateful to God for renewed health, strength, prosperity, and happiness. Well, so does the Bible. The Bible records in the Gospels 23 cases of healing by Jesus. 41 people are mentioned who received blessings of health. And there are 15 others named uh, references as activities of Jesus healing. So the blind saw, the lame walked, the deaf heard, lepers were cleansed, and oh yeah, the dead were raised. That's a pretty good act, don't you think? Only one source of that power, and that one source has to be the source of life itself. Now what do we say about life? It is, well, eternal, do we not? Yeah, so does anyone die? No, only change form. Jesus understood the process. This list of miracles that he performed, healings may seem to us to be miraculous, but there's no such thing as a miracle if we think of a miracle as something outside of natural law. These healings to us appear much like electricity would to a very primitive people. They wouldn't understand it. They wouldn't know how to put it to work. They wouldn't know where it came from. They wouldn't know what an airplane was. They wouldn't know how it got off the ground because they didn't understand the principles. Anyone who understands the principles can, in all practical purposes, make one, cause one to fly. Heck, even I could do that. Yeah, it, it's all possible. And the only reason anyone 
can be healed is because health already exists. Health is our natural state. It's the true nature of God. Can you think of God suffering some incurable uh, illness? I don't think so. That thought has never crossed my mind. Except to poo-poo it. I guess I can say that. Uh, the nature of God includes perfect life. And perfect life does not include death, decay, destruction, obstruction, overaction, or inaction. If God cannot have these conditions, then the image likeness of God, and who is that? Each one of us. Then the image likeness of God can't have them either. Rocco Erico refers to uh, the image likeness of God as a chip off the old block. Well, what would that be? That would be a small piece of the same thing, would it not? Sure. The same thing. Now, when we're convinced of any idea, it changes us. Sometimes for the better, and sometimes not. Depends upon that idea. They can be positive, they can be negative. And they're reflected in our lives by what we do, how we act, how we respond. Our bodies are formed from the matrix of the mind. I don't know if you like that phrase, matrix of the mind, but that was, that was Martha Judici. She liked to use that phrase, and I have to say that I kind of borrowed it from her. We follow certain trends of thought, and these are not just occasional casual thoughts. Oh, no. Not thoughts we sometimes think, but it's thoughts we habitually think. Don't you find yourself running over the same stuff a lot, ending up pretty much driving the same way to the, to the grocery or to church or to your friend's house? never thinking you could take another route. And as habits, they become concepts we assume to be normal or true. Now, if we think of life as a perfect stream of light, think about that for a moment. A perfect stream of pure white light. Is there any possible way to pollute light? Can you add anything to it? Can you make it dirty? Can you make it foul? You can block it. You can filter it. By filtering it, you cut out certain wavelengths so you get only certain colors. But that doesn't make it dirty. Remember the rainbow? That's a filtered ray of light separated into the seven colors. You can't, you can't do anything to pollute it. The only thing you could make is a shadow. And does it, does a shadow have any existence of its own? Something has to cause it. And as long as something is between you and the light, there's a shadow. As soon as you take it away, there's no shadow. It's purely a temporary 
phenomenon. God, disease, Disease can be an obstacle to the free flow of that life, casting shadows on perfect health. Now, whenever any, anybody came to Jesus and said, if thou will, before he said, I will be well, he never told them that their condition was incurable. Oh, I'm sorry, but uh, I don't have a license to heal this thing. Or I don't know anybody who heals this. Uh, You better try Joe down the street. Oh, no. He did not share in any misconception that certain conditions were incurable. What's the reality? There's a cure for it. We just don't know what it is right now or we're not receptive to it. Our minds aren't open to that energy that will heal and restore us in that moment. He recognized the nature of God as perfect life flowing to each person equally and endlessly. Equally and endlessly. That's a pretty good deal. Always there, always the same. Jesus knew that God was not the author of illness. One time, a leper said to him, if thou will, thou canst make me whole. That's from the eighth chapter of Matthew, beginning in verse two. Jesus touched the leper and he was immediately healed under the inspiration of the Christ mind, we come to recognize the divine will for life and wholeness and become willing to conform to it. How limited is God's healing power? I've been to doctors who seemed limited in their healing power. I'm sorry, there isn't anything we can do to fix this. We can only make you more comfortable. Or we can only slow it down. Or we can take the pain away. That's not healed. No. That's only a temporary little appeasement. God's healing power is unlimited. A rubber band. We've all stretched rubber bands, usually snapping them at somebody else in fourth grade. I remember when that was such great fun. Now, one thing you notice is it doesn't matter how much a rubber band is stretched or how little. The moment you release, what happens? Goes back to its normal state. It's not permanently distorted. It's not permanently changed. It wants to go back to that normal state and as soon as the interference of that is removed, it goes back. That's healing. Allowing the truth to come forth. I like this story that's in uh, Mark 5, beginning verse 22. Remember Jairus, the, uh, an official in the synagogue? He came to Jesus saying, my little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her so that she may be made well and live. 
fifth chapter of Mark. When Jesus came to the house, someone reported that the girl was dead. <coughs> and Jesus said, uh, the child is not dead, but sleeping. He took her by the hand and called her to get up. She did immediately. The Christ consciousness in us <coughs> has the ability to see beyond the deceptions of the senses and human awareness. Those are only mistaken convictions and our failure in the moment to discern true reality. The Christ takes away the errors of the world, the misperceptions of physical and human consciousness. Not by seeing them, but by seeing the reality in their place. Seeing through them. God does the healing. But God does the healing through us. A pipe has no water of its own. It has to be connected to a source to deliver it. A musical instrument has no music of its own. It has to come through the musician. We are part of that flow. Each must be a channel through which the water or the music flows. Two blind men followed Jesus, saying, Have mercy on us, son of David. Ninth chapter of Matthew. Jesus asked, Do you believe that I'm able to do this? They replied, Yes, Lord. Jesus told them that according to their faith, they were healed. Faith is that perceiving power of the mind which recognizes the source and presence of the thing sought. Faith in wholeness is the open channel. Thy faith has made thee whole. And that's simply being open to the energy and the source and knowing it can do what it says it can do. I am the Lord who healeth. There's healing in his hands for you. And healing is not a reward. It's a revelation.